like to uh, welcome everyone to our fifth annual Part State of the Department address, uh, updating everyone on what has gone on on the last year, and in particular this year we're actually going to take a look back at the last five years. Um, I'd like to welcome our visiting uh, medical students uh, looking at our, our residency uh, program, and we're thrilled to have you. I think we'd have a very exciting day for you, and uh, pleased to be able to share this uh, with you. And looking back at the last uh, five years, uh, it came to me that uh, the title for today's talk, Escape Velocity, seemed appropriate. Uh, gratuitous reference, of course, to our, our colleagues in uh, NASA, but I, I do think it's where the department stands today, as I hope you'll see over the next hour. What is, uh, we've accomplished and where we stand today truly, I think, represents an escape velocity to borrow uh, the uh, nomenclature from, from uh, spaceflight of a truly a great opportunity to continue this tr the tradition of this department as a pre premier department of surgery who uh, has and will continue to accomplish <coughs> great things. So with that, a disclaimer, there's so much to talk about, so many people to thank. I want to apologize in advance for those who I do not mention, but truly every member of this department of nearly 500 contributes in significant ways and it's uh, both a, uh, an honor and a, with great pride that I count myself amongst uh, the members of this department. The second disclaimer, uh, there is some geeky space stuff in this presentation, and I owe Scott Holmes uh, a, a note of thanks and appreciation for that, but I take no responsibility for the more odd uh, aspects of the presentation. So, Scott, thank you very much. So let's start with a quick overview of the department. We today stand about 500 members. Uh, that includes 11 uh, divisions ranging from uh, heart and lung transplant and abdominal transplantation to plastic surgery and pediatric surgery. Uh, we also have a, now a very large research core of nearly 30 members supporting our faculty and residents in terms of research and academic endeavors, a very large education group, again, supporting a very large education program, and we're fortunate to have other important uh, components of this department, including a very robust social media group run by Rizwan Motan and a Scott Holmes and uh, various other members of our administrative support that is really key to the functionality of this department. At a glance, we uh, now, again, as I said, uh, consist of 11 uh, divisions that include uh, th uh, new, uh, new and growing uh, elements of the department, such as a metabolic and weight loss center, which we're going to be talking about briefly this morning, a new adult plastic surgery group, our ICAM DOSI surgical incubator started by Billy Cohn and now so ably taken over by Stuart Kaur. We'll talk about that. Uh, the Lung Institute uh, uh, launched by uh, David Sugarbaker nearly three years ago and of course our research core. We uh, have 151 full-time faculty members. We'll talk more about that. And as I said, nearly uh, 500 members in total including 300 full-time employees. Uh, we see nearly 100,000 patients a year across our five primary hospital affiliations and perform over 10,000 surgical cases a year. Our research program has grown tremendously over the last five years. We'll talk a bit about that under the able leadership of uh, Scott Lemaire, Barbara Troutner, Johnny, Johnny Chen. We currently hold, uh, stand with nearly uh, $4 million in NIH funding and nearly $10 million in extramural funding overall. In both cases, tremendous growth over the last five years. Our 120 residents and fellows are likewise highly accomplished. We'll talk about that. And that includes that they and the faculty delivering over 360 peer-reviewed articles. Uh, residents are broken down between our general surgery program, we're looking forward to meeting our applicants today, and specialty and fellowship programs as indicated there. So let me go back five years and talk a little bit about where we've come from and where we are today. It's easy to forget what we did and did not have five years ago, so through the next three sides, a bit of a pictorial essay, remembering where we were five years ago. So by way of example, in 2013, our research core, now 27 members, consisted of half a dozen members, uh, really at the launch. Our Debakey Sim Lab, which we're going to, uh, our applicants will be touring today, did not exist. In fact, this is what the uh, Sim Lab looked like, just a uh, drawing on a piece of paper. Likewise, our beautiful education offices, uh, which are Dr. Debakey's uh, former lab space, um, gutted and uh, re under construction. Our first uh, visiting student uh, scholarship, or uh, American College of Surgeons scholarships, were launched in 2013, uh, five years ago. 
Two of the members, Rachel Davis and Nader Zamani, are residents today and continues in the tradition of our advancing along uh, members of our medical student uh, group. We held our first research day in 2013, a successful but relatively small affair compared to what we do today. We'll see more about that. And then a year after uh, beginning the initiation, we launched our SimLab in February of 2014 to a tremendous success. We'll talk more about that. Interestingly, the Baylor Surgery Clinics, which now see nearly uh, 7,000, excuse me, 35,000 patients a year, did not exist five years ago. We, as we'll see, were seeing patients at University General Hospital, Park Plaza, and other than a few areas such as cardiac surgery and transplant, transplant there were no clinics whatsoever on the 13th floor. We used to uh, joke that you could roll a bowling ball down the uh, 13th floor and hit no one at all. When you go by today, that is, that is certainly not the case. And again, an example of the tremendous growth over the last five years. With the launch of the SimLab in uh, May of 2014, we launched our first Surgery Olympics, which is now an annual tradition that I think everyone is drawing, uh, enjoys. Uh, second research day uh, began to show growth and uh, evidence of uh, the more robust nature of our research program. And then in May of 2014, we um, welcomed with some political discontent uh, Dick Cheney, who truly is a product of the uh, great um, accomplishments of this department, his heart transplant, his artificial heart, his heart surgery, all in many ways are due, bet for better or worse, to the uh, developments and the accomplishments of the DeBakey Department of Surgery. Um, so that was a tremendous event marking the 20th, uh, 20th uh, convening of the Michael E. DeBakey International Surgical Society. In 2014, with Rachel Davis uh, taking the helm of our global surgery program, we began our first global surgery retreat. We'll talk more about that. And then in 2014, with David Sugarbaker arriving, uh, the launch of our Lung Institute, which I think is fair to say has uh, quickly, over three years, achieved national and international uh, acclamation. In 2014, uh, Baylor merged with St. Luke's Episcopal Hospital, forming Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center, and we began the process of growing into Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center and playing an important role. Pictured here is our acute care surgery team, but as we'll talk about now, surgery at Baylor St. Luke's predominantly and dominantly represents the contributions of members of this department. And then in 20, at the end of 2014, a nascent effort, which is now going to grow tremendously, and we'll also talk about, to uh, launch our web presence to make sure that uh, we were communicating well with the outside world the accomplishments of the department. Finally, in the last couple of years, uh, new growth, new developments, new programs. Uh, this past year, we launched a rural retreat to uh, Colorado, one of our CHA partner hospitals, a tremendously su successful resident rotation where rural and community surgery is practiced over a, a six-week rotation for our general surgery residents. Again, as I mentioned, starting with Billy Cohn and now with uh, Stuart Core. A tremendously innovative Department of Surgery incubator, a translational research program where we commercialize the ideas of our department, all based within the Department of Surgery. Research Day 5 this past year, tremendously successful, again, reflective of the growth of the department. We'll talk more about that. And with the arrival of uh, uh, Joe Mills as Chief of Vascular Surgery and then his colleague from Arizona, uh, Bijan Najafi, the ICAM program assisted the Department of Surgery incubator, again, with tremendous uh, innovation. In this last year, we've looked inward as well and thought about how to take care of our residents and faculty, and we launched a number of wellness programs that we're going to talk about, including a physical trainer who's part of our department and helps support our residents. The faculty are a bit jealous about that, but we're going to reserve that for our residents for now. And then the growth of our research core and our faculty development program uh, in collaboration with the aviation industry, led by Rob Todd, called the AIR program. So looking back, that was then. Bearless St. Luke's Medical Center, five years ago, was still St. Luke's. As I mentioned, we were practicing at University General and Park Plaza Hospital. The surgery education office was, I can't really think of how to describe it, but Dr. DeBakey would have remembered it well. Um, and amazingly, three-fourths of the faculty who are here today were not here five years ago. What did not exist also included there was no division of thoracic surgery, surgical oncology, surgical research, or adult plastic surgery. There was no acute care section, colorectal, IBD, breast surgery, bariatric surgery. 
There was no faculty group practice at Baylor. There was no simulation lab. There was no research core. There was no research day. There was no surgery incubator. There was no global surgery program, thoracic surgery program, or an integrated tract in vascular surgery. And again, there was no community surgery program as well. So tremendous growth in the last five years, summarizing it. Our faculty has grown from 102 to 151 faculty members, a 50% growth. Many of our leaders who are here today were not here five years ago. Drs. Curley, Sugarbaker, Mills, Morgan, Todd, Chai, Trout, Nolor, Reese, et cetera, et cetera. We've added 21 ACPs. We've increased our support staff by 60%. Our clinical support staff has grown by 70%. Our research growth core has grown sixfold from four to 27. Our division of surgical research staff has doubled in size. Our administrative staff has grown accordingly. Our research funding has uh, grown uh, by double from four million to over eight million, uh, including a sixfold increase in our NIH fund, uh, funding. And as we'll see, our NIH rank has grown or increased from 59th to an estimated rank of 25th in the coming year. Uh, consistent with that, our GME programs have grown. Our, self, our um, alarms are going off. Um, our financial improvement uh, is uh, reflected in, uh, eight mil in a growth of eight, $8 million from a negative deficit to a uh, department surplus. So we're able to support and assist the uh, college and our work, our views have grown accordingly. Our faculty growth is uh, depicted here, um, a consistent growth over the last five years. Perhaps something that we should be most proud of is in the last two years, we've had a 97% faculty retention rate, uh, reflecting, I think, the uh, very positive energy and support of each other within the department. The growth breakdowns as follows, a uh, fairly uh, stable uh, situation in the uh, VA and our Ben Tov, uh, hospital affiliates. Uh, growth in the Texas Children's, as I shown here, but of course, most significantly with the uh, addition of Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center, a significant amount of growth on the uh, Baylor side and the Baylor St. Luke's medical side. A number of the new faculty who have joined us have already made tremendous contributions, perhaps uh, none more so than Gabe Lure. We'll talk about the lung transplant program in a minute. We were thrilled to recruit uh, Gabe uh, in his uh, in his. Uh, Partner Michelle, a year ago, Gabe has done a phenomenal job in terms of the lung transplant program. We're going to talk about that very exciting story in a few minutes. Uh, Gabe had already had a national reputation at University of Minnesota and was working on some very exciting things in a lung transplant that will, will really are going to change the phase of lung transplant both here and nationally, and uh, it's been a thrill to have uh, Gabe on our faculty. Uh, likewise, Carlos Galvani joined us uh, just uh, four months ago from the University of Arizona where he had a national reputation and continues to have a national reputation in terms of metabolic and uh, bariatric surgery, numerous uh, honors and recognitions as seen there. And Carlos is uh, working with uh, Georgia Holder Haynes, has already uh, launched uh, a, uh, what will be no doubt a, a tremendously su successful weight loss and uh, bariatric surgery program, uh, what had been a significant gap in a portfolio of services up till now. And finally, in terms of our new leadership recruiting this pa past year, um, Ed Reese has done an absolutely tremendous job working with Cheyenne Isidus in creating for the first time in five years a truly robust uh, adult plastic surgery program, offering a full a retinue of uh, services and uh, creating a very, very important uh, collaboration with Larry Ollier and the other plastic surgery team members over at Texas Children's. So again, we are expecting great things from uh, Ed and uh, the uh, now very robust uh, five-member plastic surgery group. The other uh, dozen or so faculty recruits are depicted here. We'll not go through them in uh, great detail, but they include a, a new member of our um, HLA Lab will go on to serve as co-director um, as uh, Ron Kerman uh, becomes an emeritus professor. Michelle Lohr, as I mentioned, has already made significant contributions both to uh, critical care and to her very advanced robotic abdominal wall surgery program. Uh, uh, Dr. Acharya, seen over here, was someone we, we uh, stole, I mean recruited from uh, ophthalmology and has already made significant contribution in terms of very advanced nanotechnology, drug delivery strategies, and a number of uh, other members who have all also began to uh, contribute and hit the ground running as seen here. Um, to continue to grow this program, we continue to expand our leadership program. 
Um, no, not everyone in the Department of Surgery has a, a title, but sometimes it feels that way because of the tremendous amount of uh, work going on to support uh, our various initiatives. Uh, so again, I will not go through all of those uh, members seen here, but I, I draw your attention to this cadre of assistant program directors in our education program, especially relevant um, to our can candidates here today. There is so much going on in education that we've been uh, fortunate to recruit these uh, great members uh, to assist us in areas such as uh, surgical knowledge, mentorship, women in surgery, and our simulation programs. Again, we're very, very excited that with these new members, we think there'll be a tremendous growth over the next coming years. Again, to support this growth, new leadership teams, include a uh, team in the uh, department level, including uh, Dave Anderson as our department administrator, and uh, Deb Bennett. We're going to talk about her tremendous successes in the clinic in terms of improving our patient service, and we're, we're thrilled to have uh, both uh, with us, uh, including the continued growth of our clinical team. We've also lost someone very, very important to us this past year. And I think uh, most everyone knows that uh, Dr. Cooley passed away um, in uh, December of uh, 2016. Uh, those uh, who knew a uh, very, very special person, um, what probably is uh, not completely known, although Dr. Cooley uh, started Texas Heart in uh, 1962, he started his career as a member of the Department of Surgery. And we were very fortunate back in 2007 when Dr. Caselli uh, led the uh, merger of the Texas Heart Residency Program and the Baylor Program. Dr. Cooley served as our program director for cardiothoracic uh, surgery residency for the uh, 10 years uh, prior to his uh, passing. And perhaps most significantly, certainly to me, um, and that's all that counts, of course, um, but but in, in, in all seriousness, perhaps one of the most remarkable and special days that I, I think I will ever know was the day that we asked and Dr. Cooley said that it was with great satisfaction that he accepted the position again as Distinguished Emeritus Professor in the Department of Surgery, a position that he held and uh, I think honored and we certainly held and honored um, and he will forever be an important member of our department. So we will miss Dr. Cooley tremendously, and he was a, a truly represented uh, the greatness of the Michael DeBakey Department of Surgery. So let's move on and talk about where we are today in, term, in terms of that great legacy, beginning with our clinical mission. Um, again, I think uh, the Department of Surgery has contributed tremendously to the growth of uh, Baylor St. Luke's Medical Center over the last couple of years. By one way of example, you can see the growth of our clinical surgical activity over the last uh, th three to four years. And in particular, I would bring your attention to the fact that just in the past year, there has been a 30% growth in our clinical case volume over, over at St. Luke's. Really a tremendous contribution, tremendous growth, and a real credit to our, our faculty and residents. Um, of these growth, of these, uh, this growth, there has been uh, uh, increases in activity in uh, essentially uh, every area, but I would in particular bring your attention to the vascular surgery program, which has uh, in encumbered tremendous amount of growth over the past couple of years. Miguel Montero Baker and Joe Mills, Jair Chung, and expect uh, continued success and uh, expansion uh, with new support over at the hospital level. We actually have 13 service leaders over at the uh, uh, hospital, uh, all of whom are doing tremendous things. Literally, again, too, much, too many people doing too many things to uh, en encompass entirely. But I bring your attention to two of our service chiefs, Bill Fisher and John Goss, who have really gone above and beyond in terms of not only leading their groups, but becoming incredibly important members of the uh, service staff over at St. Luke's creating and expanding uh, clinical programs over there where, where, quite frankly, the quality aspects of which largely did not exist uh, before their arrival and, and really have uh, had a tremendous impact on the hospital. So on behalf, behalf of, uh, I know, the hospital leadership, I, I thank Bill and uh, John both for your tremendous contributions. But of course, there are many more, some of which are depicted here, growth in terms of quality improvement, patient service, uh, triage of physician referrals, and just a few of the many milestones in the past year on the abdominal transplant side, number one in liver transplant in terms of quality, number two in terms of kidney transplant. As I mentioned, over 1,000 vascular surgery cases performed in the past year. Talk about this a bit, uh, 135 uh, robotic lung procedures led by Brian Burt from scratch two years ago. In this past year, Steve Curley celebrated only his 3,000 
liver resection, Steve, when you're going to get it going. Um, this slide is perhaps to me the most amazing because I never six months ago thought I would be presenting da data such as this. Um, one of the greatest challenge, Dan Weems, that we faced is uh, our patient service. And uh, many of us believed, in fact, that by a show of hands, I am sure I could prove it, that something called press gainy scores were immutable, cast in stone, and could never be changed. Um, but this graph here depicts what um, Deb Bennett and our clinical support staff have done over the past year, which has actually moved the unmovable. And our patient uh, press satisfaction, press gainy scores, because of the tremendous efforts our clinical staff over the past year, have all moved into the green. Um, thoracic surgery, temporary setback. I, I mention that only because it's a great opportunity to um, uh, tease uh, David Sugarbaker, who's put, probably put together the most phenomenal patient service program um, in, the, in the entire institution. And uh, really, the, the fact that we've been able to move this patient satisfaction in such a positive way is really a tremendous tribute to our in uh, tire staff. That has not happened by accident. It's happened through tremendous uh, efforts of De Deborah and her staff. Uh, some of uh, those Six Sigma efforts are depicted here, and I've been uh, memorialized by our frequent, it seems almost uh, uh, monthly, That's the Way Award, where uh, to the college's credit, they recognize those efforts and uh, contributions. So we'll embarrass uh, Dr. James Sulabark here for a second with his award. Hollywood smile, James, of course, and uh, James, again, uh, Dr. Sugarbaker, the thoracic group have been uh, uh, honored uh, innumerable times, and, and really, I think the department has really begun to figure this out, and uh, re uh, not at all a, a trivial effort. Just to highlight a few of our new and growing, growing programs, I just mentioned uh, Gabe Lohr and the uh, lung transplant program. Uh, data, uh, I'm sorry, I apologize, I will be mentioning that in a sec. This is our heart transplant, heart and bad mechanical circulatory support program led by Jeff Morgan. Uh, the data are here, tremendous growth in terms of improvement in uh, survival, depicted here on heart transplant on the right in terms of LVAD. Um, growth across the board, uh, the publication of the first textbook of mechanical circulatory support, which uh, Jeff has uh, led with uh, Bud Frazier, an iconic uh, figure in that uh, field. The total artificial heart efforts uh, by Billy Cohn are ongoing. And through the support of Joe Caselli, who with David Sugarbaker, former president of the American Association of Thoracic Surgery, this coming year, the AATS, um, which is uh, the premier professional society in cardiac surgery, will be coming to Houston uh, to uh, host a program uh, led by Jeff Morgan on mechanical circulatory uh, support. Uh, so top three uh, VAD programs in the United States, top 20 in terms of heart transplant, and really has seen here tremendous growth over the past year. Um, likewise, in lung transplantation, uh, Gabe has uh, literally uh, performed historic service um, perhaps most dramatically, a uh, lung transplant at uh, St. Luke's Texas Heart has never been more than 20 or 30. This year, in Gabe's first year of uh, service here at uh, Baylor, he will have dub doubled historic numbers and uh, has already performed, I think, his 52nd lung transplant this year and is uh, on target to hit near nearly 60. Perhaps equally, if not more importantly, that has been performed with uh, uh, outcomes that are best in a uh, Texas in uh, the uh, top uh, 10 uh, in uh, the United States with 94% uh, one-year lung transplant survival. And perhaps even more excitingly, Gabe has led a uh, national effort uh, for translational and really iconic research um, that we'll probably look back on and say, why were we never doing this all along? So this is uh, a program called Ex Vivo Lung Perfusion, whereas as opposed to in the movies where you harvest uh, organs, put them in that iconic bucket of ice. Uh, now with uh, efforts that uh, Gabe has uh, helped lead, those uh, organs such as the lung in particular, very sensitive to uh, ischemia, are now preserved in a perfusion apparatus that will extend the durability and the survivability of a uh, lung transplant program that Gabe will be bringing to uh, Baylor St. Luke's in, in the coming year. I mentioned the uh, robotic uh, surgery program. I think this uh, video will play. And again, this did not exist uh, 12 to 18 months again. And under David Sugarbaker's leadership um, and program led by Brian, uh, Brian Burt and Sean Groth, we are now performing a uh, rapidly growing number of robotic thoracic cases with in increasing success. 
and again a true uh, reflection of the uh, innovativeness and uh, the uh, pa uh, power and capabilities of our faculty. Um, uh, la uh, last or uh, next to last but not least, uh, Joe Lamellis also uh, joined us this past year, was introduced to the faculty um, at this time last year. And uh, Joe, of course, has also hit the ground running. And uh, actually, I don't think he's ever hit the ground. He's always been uh, running above, above the ground. The ground would slow him down too much. Um, but Joe, in his first year here, has performed now over 200 or close to 200. Over 200, sorry. I didn't want to get that wrong. Um, over 200 minimally invasive uh, cardiac and open cardiac surgery pr uh, procedures, predominantly minimally, minim minimally invasive, uh, 90 plus percent, 95 plus percent. Um, probably uh, uh, with uh, several others of our faculty, the, uh, the, one of the coolies of our, our generation doing procedures through two inch incisions, uh, aortic root replacements, trivial things like that, that uh, few if any others uh, in the world can perform and uh, Joe's volume and outcomes are reflective of this. Uh, Dr. Caselli and I were fortunate to uh, be able to uh, recruit uh, Joe here this past year, and it's just been a, a tremendous uh, honor and uh, thrill to have uh, Joe amongst our faculty. And again, uh, 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 plastic surgery, as mentioned, Ed Reese and Cheyenne Isidus have uh, again likewise done a tremendous job growing the plastic surgery program. First time in uh, the recent history of uh, the uh, department that we've had such a robust adult program here, and again, a, a tremendous uh, success. And uh, finally, in terms of our new and growing clinical programs, we're very excited to uh, have uh, Ed, uh, uh, I'm sorry, um, Carlos Galvani join a multidisciplinary group that includes our colleagues in, uh, in uh, uh, gastroenterology for interventional procedures to aid and assist our, our bariatric patients. Let me shift gears and talk about our education uh, mission for a bit. Again, a lot of very, very exciting things uh, going on. Let me uh, start by bringing uh, your, focusing your attention on this uh, graph on the right. Uh, not to, meant to intimidate our candidates, but uh, because of the success of our program, our in entrance uh, USMLEs uh, mean now range about 255, which is the top 10%. More importantly, of course, that they've been continuing to grow year on year, which again is a, a tribute to Brad Scott and our entire education leadership team. Uh, likewise, because of the strength of our clinical program, the case volumes continue to grow. Again, top tier of uh, departments of surgery, ranging over 1,400 cases and uh, nearly 300 cases in the senior year. Again, a reflection of the robustness of the uh, program. A lot of information on this slide, I won't go through uh, all of it, but again, we continue to innovate in the uh, education department, and I would uh, mention uh, only, only a couple of these, thi uh, these areas. One is the uh, concept of elective rotations, which we're introducing this year, and the option of additional year for professional development of our, or research, which again is a new program reflective of our continuing looking at how to improve our education programs. Other elements reflective of uh, challenges that we've, fa uh, we've faced in the prior year but addressed in terms of uh, excessive service obligations. Uh, we've added uh, resident-led education rounds, uh, hospital-based uh, leadership programs led by residents to help address uh, issues as, as they develop. A uh, new robotics committee led by Christy Chai to make sure that our robotics program fit with res resident educational needs. Again, an issue brought up uh, just several weeks ago by our residents addressing challenges to the program. A SimLab Academy, so uh, faculty appropriately focused on uh, are the educational needs in the SimLab of our residents and the like. Um, we are putting this all together and memorializing this in a, a resident guidebook effort uh, being led by uh, Eric Racklin, who uh, uh, stepped up to the plate, uh, took on a monumental project the guidebook now weighs in at over 100 pages and I think will rival the Washington Manual in terms of its uh, import, in terms of uh, codifying how uh, residents are taking care of themselves and, and our, our program as well. Um, again, I've mentioned now the global track a couple of years ago. This did not even exist as an idea five years ago. Um, largely through the uh, guidance and uh, leadership of Rachel Davis, but now joined by uh, Megan Vu and Yuma Sharif, uh, this uh, global program is real, it is robust, and uh, tremendously exciting things are going on 
in terms of our global surgery program, now being led by Larry Ollier, Chad Wilson, Dr. Uh, Olatoye, and, uh, and the like. This is the only NRMP recognized program in the country. Uh, it was, uh, I would say, uh, it's in, not immodest to say it was lauded at the recent American College of Surgery uh, as a tremendously innovative out of the block. We'll talk a little bit more with the residents about it, but it essentially now involves PGY three year, which is exploratory, developing skills, and then we will be doing a PGY seven year, where as a graduating resident, you can apply those skills in a variety of settings to some of the places where our program has been over the last couple of years, and we expect continued growth uh, through the tremendous efforts of our in initiating uh, members of uh, this program. A variety of other special programs, literally too many to mention, so I share some pictures with you for your interest. Um, but I'm perhaps uh, most uh, excited both about our student support programs, our mentorship program, our very successful uh, boot camp program, and some new additions to our M&M conference, which of course is the cornerstone of our surgery education program, a new Great Cases, Great Saves program, which we've launched just in the last month. It's something that we're fascinated by and will be very exciting as a categorizing of the uh, human errors aspect of how we can learn from our, our, the challenges in our clinical case management to improve something that we hope will be a uh, milestone in terms of uh, surgical care. Our SIM lab, I mentioned again, has grown tremendously over the last two years, led by Nelson Salas and uh, Mario Vera, and a uh, tremendous uh, uh, leadership of uh, Deb Taylor, recently joined by uh, Ebony Lewis. You can see the growth here. I will not uh, detail all of that. Six-fold increase in contact hours, doubling of the uh, sessions, the number of learners, and as I mentioned, we now have a, a dedicated SIM lab academy effort. We take special recognition of uh, the uh, uh, 10 faculty members who are leading the uh, SIM lab in terms of uh, dedicated um, uh, train, specially trained uh, leadership and uh, uh, support of uh, learners in the uh, SIM lab uh, setting. New robotic uh, training programs, microsurgery programs launched this year, and uh, perhaps most importantly in terms of the SIM lab's ability to adapt and respond to challenges. We, for example, discovered over the past year that our ability, of, the ability of our residents to deal with complex central line issues, the hypoxic patient, the, uh, the combative patient, were not something that we necessarily trained our residents in coming out of the blocks. So uh, Nilsen Salas put together a, a special program with advanced training for uh, central line placement, which all of our residents have now completed, again, is, our, I think, reflective of our ability to adapt to challenges in the, uh, in the uh, practice and uh, training of our residents. Again, our Surgical Olympics are now an annual tradition. I think uh, the Mets uh, beat the uh, Red Sox last year. We divide up into teams. And this has, again, become a, 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 a cornerstone of uh, the emphasis on the technical aspects of our resident training as well as the didactic aspects. Um, the, uh, the, uh, entry, one of the entry points for our, our um, students uh, transitioning into residency and a number of uh, the, the uh, DeBakey summer students have gone on into resident programs both here and elsewhere, but it is one, one of the uh, great uh, joys of our department is welcoming in uh, college students from all over the country interested in uh, medicine and uh, surgery. Uh, this is under the leadership of Cheyenne Isidus. We uh, recruit about a dozen students from uh, over 250 uh, applicants. And at the end of a very uh, intense and uh, robust uh, summer, we started a tradition three years ago of the uh, swan song where the uh, uh, students with a fresh perspective share their thoughts on being um, exposed to this training, which I'll share with you hopefully now. So how this program helped me, without a doubt, I know I want to be a doctor. And uh, that was very brief, but really we spent, we spent, <laughs> Scott, <laughs> um, that, the, that is a, a, absolutely a, a, a tremendous um, experience to hear from these uh, um, sort of uh, un, un, uh, unbiased um, outside observers what, what it means to be a surgeon, and it is truly a joy to sit through the uh, swan songs o over the uh, cor course of the summer something we look forward to uh, every year. Our residents and students continue to strive. Here's just a, a snapshot of some of those receiving uh, significant honors. 
Again, uh, Rachel Davis was inducted into the uh, Alpha Omega Honor Society. Tremendous uh, honor, tremendous uh, accomplishment. Catherine Seeger uh, became a Raleigh Ross uh, Scholar this past year. Catherine Bow receiving a T32 uh, fellowship. And uh, Jessica Mayor receiving the Center of Ex Excellence Scholarship amongst the many very, very, very significant contributions and uh, recognitions by our residents and students. Uh, shifting gears and uh, going to the uh, research mission again, tremendous uh, growth. Uh, very briefly, as I, I mentioned, $3.8 million in total NIH funding, up from a low of 600000 in uh, 2014. Uh, growth across the, across the board in terms of awards and accomplishments. Um, but Barbara Troutner's leadership, the research core has grown to 27 members, bringing in uh, $49 million in grant applications, 83 projects. You can see the growth in terms of uh, uh, the productivity of the uh, core over the last three or four years under Barbara's uh, tremendous uh, leadership, now joined by uh, Terry Fisher as uh, administrative support. And, uh, of course, very important uh, metric is our NIH uh, Blue Ridge ranking. This is how we compare to other departments of surgery in terms of the benchmark of uh, NIH funding. Again, some, from a low of being uh, ranked 59th, certainly not very uh, Baylor-esque. Uh, we, uh, this past year, at $2.9 million reflective of funding two years ago, rose to 34th. We expect we will come in at uh, $3.6 million in the coming year which should put us in the uh, top 25. We will be ahead of Columbia, very important to me, coming from New York. And uh, NYU, I just have to point out, down here at 37, so um, we're, we're, we're doing well. Uh, for, the, for the local flavor, UT Houston, I'm not competitive, I'm sorry. Um, UT Houston down here at 60, UT Southwestern at uh, 56. I, but I didn't say any of those things. Um, uh, important growth includes our program grants. Uh, we have uh, applied for a T32, which we are in our cardiovascular uh, education, which we research education, we uh, expect to get uh, funded. We're very hopeful in terms of our score. Joe Mills uh, submitted and uh, received an endorsement of a letter of uh, uh, interest on a PCORI grant looking at limb amputation rates. Uh, database growing. We have some very exciting uh, uh, collaborations ongoing with Rice, including a new relationship with the uh, School of Engineering. And uh, very important, we'll hear about later, um, growth of our resident research tracks under uh, Scott Lemaire and Nada Mazzari's um, efforts. A number of important uh, grants this past year, led by Dr. Acharya with his uh, $1.6 million nano wafer drug delivery grant I mentioned briefly before. Nader Mazzari received his first of what is, will no doubt be many uh, VA merit and other, other awards. Bijan Najafi has a, just a pipeline of uh, funding from the uh, NIH uh, SBIR business development grants and is uh, literally scouring the world, including Qatar, uh, to receive funding for very uh, innovative work in terms of uh, motion studies and biomechanical engineering and uh, other awards uh, here. James Suleberg we'll get to in, in a second, and uh, our collaborators at Texas Children as well continue to uh, do well. Um, our research day, again, was a uh, tremendous uh, success. It continues to uh, grow under Scott Lemaire's leadership this past year. We had 136 submissions, triple 2013. We had our greatest student participation with, uh, ever with 35 submissions. 114 abstracts were presented, double 2014, and over 250 people in attendance. Um, we are very proud and uh, thrilled to uh, this year have introduced a clinical quality improvement program uh, designated and directed to our uh, advanced uh, clinical practice uh, uh, PAs and NPs. And uh, um, even more significantly came up with some, uh, they all came up with uh, some very, very exciting and innovative ideas looking at uh, phone improving phone access, treatment of patients with cleft palate, integrated uh, acute care and multidisciplinary care, and uh, vascular surgery uh, access um, uh, challenges. So um, we're all in, um, all members of our department are contributing and are important contributors. And uh, all of these uh, seed grant programs are very exciting to us. Uh, Twelve awards worth a quarter of a million dollars uh, given out to uh, faculty in our seed grant program over the last three years, but perhaps most excited about including our ACPs in this program as well. 
This all is reflected in a record number of uh, publications, 380 this past year. You can see the uh, distribution and the growth in the uh, prior year, and we continue to do well in that regard, including a number of uh, high-impact uh, publication as uh, uh, depicted here, including New England Journal of Medicine, uh, Nature, Annals of Surgery, our faculty contributing at this very, very high level depicted here as well. We continue to uh, um, attack the challenges of improving the care of our patients in multiple ways. This past year, we gained entry into the very prestigious um, NIH uh, Cardiac uh, Surgery Clinical Trials Network, the uh, elite of cardiac surgery uh, care depicted here, Johnny Chen and uh, Kathy Yao, uh, innumerable uh, contributions in uh, uh, translational and uh, basic science, including one, two, three, four, four patents just this past year. Uh, looking at some very uh, innovative uh, treatments of uh, uh, pancreatic uh, cancer. And uh, James Suleberg, who uh, continues really to be a marvel, uh, this past year was featured on NBC News, BBC, local news. Um, I read an AP press release, James, I think we've got most of those. On a very, very exciting, you probably saw this on television, very exciting uh, mass spectrometry, spec, uh, spectrometry uh, approach to uh, diagnosing uh, cancer and uh, biopsy specimens using a uh, special uh, cancer pen. Really just reflective of James' tremendously innovative and imaginative um, um, efforts. I mentioned the ICAMP, uh, just a, a tremendous variety of uh, programs led by Bijan Najafi. These are some of the uh, tech technologies that Bijan is uh, developing to work with our vascular group to understand motion uh, limitations and uh, treatments. Uh, Bijan and the ICAM group have uh, generated over $3.7 million in extramural funding, um, additional $3 million in grants pending with 18 approved protocols, three patents filed in the first uh, year of their um, uh, existence over, uh, over here at uh, Baylor. And uh, Bijan's counterpart in crime is uh, Stuart Core. Will, uh, Billy Cohn, who uh, in launched the uh, surgical incubator about two years ago now, um, is now uh, taking over the lead of uh, J-Labs over the Texas Medical Center, a wonderland of uh, innovation. We're very, very excited to uh, be collaborating with Billy on, on these efforts. Uh, you probably received a, a flyer as you sat down, and that's really sort of reflective of uh, Stuart's um, uh, non-embarrassable uh, um, uh, endorsement of the efforts of the uh, uh, surgery uh, incubator, which just continues to flourish and grow. Literally too many activities for me to mention, but um, 32 active projects, taking ideas of our faculty, our residents, our students, translating them into intellectual property and hopefully something that can be uh, commercialized to the benefit of our patients. Everything from scarless surgery, ways of stopping bleeding during a space flight to uh, Mars, uh, which was a subject of a fascinating grant using uh, nanobots to uh, deliver hemostatic activities and uh, actively bleeding wounds, to things that are critical problems, but uh, uh, obviously more mundane, such as a, a uh, challenge event uh, and a hackathon to deal with issues such as uh, pressure ulcers. Really tremendous effort. So robust, in fact, that we can't call it the uh, surgery incubator anymore because there's too much going on. So Stuart has now coined the term uh, instinct, which is the Interdisciplinary Surgical Technology Innovation Center uh, that encompasses all of these uh, many activities. This uh, Saturday's a plug uh, for Surgery Collaboration Day where about 250 investigators are going to come together to look at innovative approaches to challenges in surgery. This is the event last year, which again had over 250 uh, attendees um, looking at uh, ways of addressing challenges to problem. Really a tremendous coalescence of talent, knowledge, know-how, and resources at TMC, which we in the Department of Surgery are very proud to be part of. In the last uh, quarter of my uh, talk, let me finish by talking about how we outreach to make sure that uh, we can share some of these technologies. Uh, Rizwan Moton, Scott Holmes, Kim Mas uh, uh, Kim and Marcel Laro and uh, uh, Susan Ressler have uh, led this effort together with uh, Chad Wilson and Stacy Carter. Um, everything from uh, video, online videos with uh, about 30 of our faculty now involved with this to a variety of communication uh, programs. Um, Facebook, Twitter, like us, at BCM, underlying surgery. 
continues to grow. This is the modern era of communication. We all know that. In total, we had 570,000 impressions or encounters online this past year. You can see the growth here. And I think a very, very important way of uh, our reaching out, making sure we're sharing our knowledge, our, our know-how, and what's going on here. Again, at BCM Surgery Online. Um, variety of other in the news events you can see here. I will not uh, overview it. We have uh, Dr. Maddox up here talking about um, the ma mass casualty event in uh, Las Vegas. Um, Dr. Dr. Uh, 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 Lamellis and uh, his uh, uh, minimally invasive heart surgery, Dr. Goss, um, Dr. Curley doing something with a horse over here, I'm not quite sure, and then um, the, ca the cancer pen uh, innovation that uh, Dr. Sulabark was, was involved with. A variety of uh, outreach meetings to, again, bring scientists, researchers, clinicians together to talk about this. Um, DEFCON 17 was a tremendous success. We have DEFCON 18 coming up, which is uh, w the world's uh, largest uh, coalescence of uh, uh, experts on uh, treatment of diabetic foot um, ulcers being, uh, and diabetic limb salvage lead, being led by uh, Dr. Mills. A variety of other areas here. Collaboration Day, Dr. Caselli is always very successful. Cardiovascular Conference and an upcoming new conference led by Dr. Sugarbaker and Dr. Growth and Dr. Burt on management of esophageal disease. We expect this is going to, again, be uh, a unique uh, contribution in the field. None of this happens, of course, without support. You notice that no one uh, else got their name next to their picture in terms of these introductory slides. But I thought it was important that we recognize one of the unsung heroes of our department, Rashad Mohammed, is our chief financial officer who makes this all happen, finds the money to make this all possible, and, and truly, uh, I'm indebted to Rashad for his behind the scene efforts, uh, without which none of this would happen. So a special call out to, and thanks personally for me to Rashad for making uh, our life uh, so, mu so much easier. Um, finally, and this is new, we've never talked about this as a true mission, but in, in thinking of how we grow as a department, our development as individuals is of course equally important. This is I think probably one of the unforgotten elements of uh, having a robust um, academic uh, enterprise and organization. But faculty, resident, and staff development increasingly, and I think even more so in the coming years, is going to be an important part of the uh, formula. So two major programs. One is our academic RVU program, which we launched about uh, three years ago under Scott Lemaire's leadership. This is actually codifying, prioritizing, scoring, and even awarding our academic productivity. So it's not all about clinical productivity, how we contribute in terms of publications, grants, involvement in committees, national presence and the like. We literally are putting our money where our mouth is. Over the last three years, we've awarded over a million dollars in academic RVU awards to our productive faculty members. Two thirds of eligible faculty have been uh, receiving awards. And perhaps more importantly, and, and really fascinating, this is unique in the country as far as we know. Uh, Dr. Lemaire is preparing a publication for the American Surgical this year to uh, 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 codify this and bring it to uh, uh, the country's attention. 42% increase in presentations, 60% increase in our grant submissions, 200% increase in our active grants, 55% increase in our patents over the last three years corresponding to the launch of our academic RVU program. We, of course, cannot um, ac uh, prove causality, but very, very interesting uh, relationship between our actually emphasizing, prioritizing the academic productivity of our department. And our second major professional development um, area of growth is our AIR program, led by uh, Rob Todd. This is a collaboration with American Airlines. We now hope to be expanding this to a collaboration with NASA where we learn from the aviation industry how we improve uh, human interactions and uh, human error management. Of course, we know a very, very important uh, aspect of uh, uh, management of uh, surgical patients. So last year, Sam Awad launched our clinical error self-reporting. So when we see a problem, we tell people about it. We've now had 60 online reports of different problems. Our central line uh, challenges, for example, were not recognized because they happened one at one hospital, another one at another hospital, and then a third event. When we realized we had three of these similar events at three hospitals, we realized there was something there. 
were able to act on something that otherwise might have, might have gotten an ignored. A number of other examples of that. This year, we're going to be launching under Chris O'Mahony's leadership the Jump Seat program. I'll show you a video of that in a second. And with uh, Linda Taylor's support, uh, James Sulaberg is leading an effort uh, to send a number of our faculty over to Rice, where we're going to get trained in uh, coaching skills and we're going to become embedded coaches within the department to help and work with our colleagues and learn from each other in terms of how to become uh, more capable, more, more well-balanced, and well, more well-grounded members of this organization. This is another brief video, a little bit less brief than the last one. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, Chris O'Mahony put together. We're actually going to have, we've actually now, Chris has actually now trained members of the medical student group to go into the operating room as observers, understand what's going on, give us as faculty and residents feedback on how we're interacting as uh, team members, and we hope this will translate into improved outcomes into our, into our acting as team. So just for fun, this is a uh, stars Ron Cotton, I believe, as a surgeon, and it uh, exemplifies for student training how we should or should not be interacting in the office. Okay, so Chimbley, I'm not sure if you've ever seen a kidney transplant today, um, or ever seen a kidney transplant before, but um, this, you know, what's really important is to know kind of the indications for the procedures. So this patient had diabetes, and diabetes led to, among other things, kidney failure, and so that's what so Ron, Ron is a great, great physician, has done great work at the VA, and he's exempl exemplifying great, great behavior in terms of a timeout in the operating room. It's a very exciting program we're looking forward to. So this is real. We actually have a trainer, Bart Blackwell. He actually uh, does some work for some of the department leadership on, on the side, but actually Bart now twice a week comes to the gym here at Baylor and trains our residents. You know, the Greeks back in the day said healthy mind, healthy body, and vice versa, and we do think this is important. And we are excited to offer this aspect of wellness training to our residents, not our faculty yet. Um, you're, you guys are not ready for this. Um, but Linda Taylor is available and is an important part of our department. We're thrilled to have Linda working with us on a regular basis now, meets both with residents and faculty in terms of making sure we, we are able to deal with the challenges of a very high-paced environment. We're thrilled to have Linda as a, a permanent and important part of our faculty development and a wellness program. Um, interestingly, this is, this is brand new, and uh, Mar Mary Brandt and Dr. Kai and uh, um, a number of Amerith uh, Mason, a number of our uh, Christy Chai, and a number of other uh, women residents and faculty in the last uh, year or so launched our Association of Women Surgeons. This is Mary Brandt in, uh, in the middle. There's another pi similar picture with, with me in the middle of this group. I was a little embarrassed to show that one. So, um, but it's a wonderful group of uh, uh, peer support. I think I'd la actually like to see this uh, with, with other um, uh, groups get together and a, a tremendous opportunity to sit down and talk about challenges that we face uh, either based on our um, backgrounds or gender or, or the like. And uh, I think a uh, really an absolutely uh, self-grown effort to uh, make us uh, function better as individuals as well as members of the department. We continue to strive in terms of our accomplishments, literally too many to uh, mention. Um, all, um, just as an aside, uh, Dr. Frazier received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the uh, uh, Association of a Heart and Lung Transplant. Dr. Caselli, Dr. Mills uh, receiving innumerable awards, um, too, literally too many to mention, but uh, we're very, very proud of uh, each and every one of these uh, very singular uh, honors. As groups, we were uh, highly recognized in Houstonian Magazine, top, uh, uh, top doctors. A great number of our faculty received Norton Rose Education Excellence Awards, and our three uh, master clinicians, uh, Dr. Fisher, Dr. Wall, and uh, Dr. Wesson, again, uh, just reflective of the tremendous talents and attributes of our department of faculty. A number of uh, faculty promotions which continue apace. And now as I close, let me talk about the future. Obviously a tremendously uh, powerful foundation. I do truly believe we are, as, as uh, the vernacular goes, at escape velocity. Two weeks ago, we had our second, fifth annual, I don't think I'll survive to the third, fifth annual, but we'll, we'll see, um, department retreat to talk about where we have uh, come from and uh, where we would like to go. So five years ago, this was our department vision. 
It was quite long. I don't know if it was necessarily very um, aggressive or, or bold. We wanted to be highly visible. We wanted to uh, recruit leaders, um, and we wanted to collaborate. I think this was, sel this was self generated and I think uh, reflective of where the department, in terms of self-identity, has uh, come in five years. We now want to be, uh, as our vision, internationally recognized. We want to be a premier or view ourselves as a premier department of surgery, innovating breakthrough improvements, and we plan to uh, train in, uh, the next generation of sci surgical scientists, educators, and innovators, perhaps some of the people sitting in the middle room. And again, I think very reflective. This is the end product of our retreat held two weeks ago, and I think a very proud vision of where we want to go in the next five years. More specifically, we broke out our goals and objectives in the, in the, uh, next, uh, for the next five years. Again, I think very bold and appropriate goals for this Department of Surgery. Not itemize them here, but we again want to uh, develop, train, and execute on cutting-edge technology, provide um, outstanding cutting-edge um, support and care for our patients. We want to train uh, in a most robust, robust education programs with great feedback and innovative systems of uh, training and uh, teaching in our education program. Uh, we want to outreach, we want to develop, we want to innovate, and importantly, we want to brand the Baylor Surgery brand as a preeminent um, in the country. Now, this is the uh, Geeky Space Time. How do we reach escape velocity? First, I'll talk about this as people. Let me talk about the people. This is the foundational area of everything that we do. A year ago, at uh, this Ground Rounds presentation, we talked about good to great. We have the people. We have the most tremendous faculty, resident support staff, I think, of any department of surgery or any department for that matter in the country. Those of who have been here for a long time, I think, take it for granted. This is a very special group of people, and it is the foundational basis of everything that we do. All of us should be very proud of those that we surround ourselves with. Second, it's about process. It truly is. We think this often. That is not the way we do things. We do things this way. There is always a way. There is always a process. And one of the challenges that we'll face over the next five years as we look at challenges, I truly believe the second st step in terms of our being successful is finding our ways through the challenges, under the challenges, over the challenges, and like, okay, once in a while maybe we'll knock down a couple of walls, um, but really there is a tremendous ability with the talent in this room to uh, encounter and achieve over any challenges. And finally, of course, there is the uh, foundation and the background of our great legacy. Obviously, Dr. DeBakey, his uh, wife and daughter, or his, um, widow and daughter, uh, Katrine and Olga, joined us at Research Day um, two years ago. If there is any evidence or proof that we need about the power of possible, it's this great legacy of uh, Dr. Dr. DeBakey and the great tradition of this uh, department. And if we needed further affirmation, probably these words of Katrine DeBakey uh, speak where we are as a department today in 2016. Her comments, my husband, Dr. DeBakey, would be pleased, happy, and proud because there was excellence in the air. And I truly do believe that's where this Department of Surgery is today. So with that, I will conclude um, by thanking. Uh, there will be one more geeky, strange slide to follow. Um, but we are, we are truly at a, a very a significant, I think, moment in this Department of Surgery. It's been my tremendous honor and privilege uh, to be uh, uh, one of your leaders over the last five years. And I look forward to an, the next five years of a tremendous accomplishment. Thank you all. Look forward to meeting with our residents, and I appreciate the day.